rebels who defied heaven with arms fell headlong from Athenian skies, hurled, vanquished into a dim abyssal gulf. We forsaken, forever condemned to taste burdened air and churning ash, racked for eternity with obdurate pride and steadfast hate. We, who chose never to yield or submit, strived to make a heaven of hell. We raised our great capital, Pandemonium, from which his dark majesty ruled, till vanished he did from his infernal throne. From our strongholds deep, we now rage against one another, each fixing our plans upon the throne. Here, at last, I shall be free. To reign is worth ambition. Though in this place of darkness made visible, better to rule in hell than serve in heaven. Such is the current state of hell. Lucifer, Prince of Darkness, has vanished. The throne sits vacant, an empire for the taking to those with ambition. Hell is not all fire, brimstone, and ash. There is certainly an oasis in this wasteland. Pandemonium is typically a word used to describe something chaotic or wild. And that is the perfect way to describe the capital city of Hell. Considered to be a neutral territory, here the denizens of Hell toil day in and day out in the vast city streets. It's here demons, fiends, and fallen are all welcome to trade, converse, plot, and scheme in the shadow of the tower. It was Haruspex Palanza who selected the site for Pandemonium. However, Mulciber led its construction. Pandemonium was built from stone, iron, and unrefined sins collected from a time of Adam and Eve until the death of their great-grandchildren. Mulciber crafted Pandemonium's design and saw to its completion through his establishment of the Order of Infernal Engineers, an organization that would later make several technological advancements for life in hell. They say that Lord Mammon financed the construction of the city, but other notes from within Lucifer's choir, particularly those of Bishop Bezel, suggest that the riches were actually commandeered for the development of pandemonium. Marble was brought in from slave quarries, pearls from the hearts of drowned sailors, nine-tenths of the gold in Mammon's vault was melted down for the pillars and architraves. When he owed money, he made up for the shortfall with lavish gifts and even more lavish promises. A testament of Mammon's avarice or his fear of Lucifer's power. Pandemonium would be complete, and it would become the beacon of Lucifer's empire. Its walls stand tall and utilitarian, forming a line that rises in places the height of forty men. Outside, Ash-stained walls reflect the red lightning and wine that flows just beneath the chapped wrinkle of Hell's ground. Inside, the light is softer, darker, more pleasing to the night eye. The streets bustle with the figures of demons and spirits about their daily duties. Passages, snickleways, corridors, and alleys web the spaces between each building, as if part of some great elaborate design. Pandemonium is home to the bazaar, 
where artifacts and legions are auctioned off to the Dark Lords. Even some powerful demons, like Mulciber and Barbatos, are willing to ply their deadly skills to the highest bidder. It is also host to the arena, the best entertainment in hell. Crowds will line up for miles to see two Praetors duel, with the loser being banished into the abyss. Don't get the wrong idea, though. There is no such thing as a fair fight in the arena. It's considered poor manners if you don't at least try to bribe the officials. All of this is overseen by the Infernal Conclave, the bureaucratic system of lesser demons who handle the administration of Hell. The Infernal Conclave control the arena, the bazaar, and the flow of tributes and souls in Hell. It was established after the fall by Lucifer to maintain a semblance of order and regulate the bloodshed between Hell's inhabitants. This may be Hell, but there's still rules and laws. The Conclave is also responsible for electing the new ruler, as determined by the trial of the throne. But who is worthy to wear the crown? Archfiends. Among the strongest and most terrifying figures of Hell, they emerged from the depths to lay their claim to the bloody throne. Some will seek it through conquest, marching their legions over the broken bodies of their enemies. Others will use sorcery, dark magics, and foul rituals to turn the tide in their favor. And some will use manipulation, pitting their rivals against each other, controlling them like a puppet before cutting their strings. Who will take the throne? Perhaps the greater question, how will they take it? Will they impress the Conclave with their reputation for evil? Will they depose their rival Archfiends? Or will they just march their armies towards Pandemonium and lay siege? Maybe there is a power behind the throne, just waiting to plunge the dagger. It is not merely enough to win, others must lose. I know just one thing for certain, it's gonna be a hell of a story.